Hi, I'm Kehlani, and I'm your host for Code Along with Black Girls Code. Today, we're going to dive into something super fun, creating an all about me project in Scratch. The project will have a twist though. It'll be all about the person playing it. That's right, by the end of this session, we'll have created an interactive project that other users can engage with in Scratch. Ready to code it? Let's go. Before we dive in, make sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Let's go to scratch.mit.edu and log in. If you're new to Code Along in Scratch, make sure to check out this video to learn how to make an account. It's also a great episode to review if you need some help learning the basics in Scratch. Now, I'm going to create a new project. You can do this by clicking on File, then New. For our project today, let's pretend we're making a new friend. The best way to get to know a new friend is asking them questions about themselves, right? I want to collect user responses to create a story that's all about them. We can do this using variables. A variable can store information in a project. Today, we're going to use variables to store some of the user's favorite things. Before we get started, I want you to think about the types of questions you might want to know about a new friend. This might include their favorite hobby, favorite food, favorite pet, or anything else you can think of. This project is not going to use cloud variables, so no one else will be able to access the user's responses. Pretty cool, right? First things first, let's add a background image. Click on the mountain icon to select any background that you like. If you want, you can even create or upload your own image too. I'm going to choose this spotlight image to share all of the user's favorite things in the center of the stage. Next, let's update our sprite. Click X to delete the scratch cat, then click on the cat icon to select any sprite image you like. Like the background image, you can draw or upload a sprite image too. Let's pick a sprite who will be asking our new friend all their favorite things. I'm going to use the max sprite for my project, but you can pick any person or character you like. Now let's get to coding. First, we want to initialize our sprite by setting its size and position so that it appears in the same place in the same size every time the project starts. To do this, head to the events category and drag out a when green flag clicked block. Pro tip, update the sprite's current position on screen by moving it with your mouse. Then go to motion category and place a go to XY block underneath when green flag clicked. Notice the block already has the sprite's current X and Y coordinates in the parameter bubbles. If you'd like the sprite image to appear bigger or smaller on screen, use set size to and change size by blocks from the looks category. Update the parameter to the number you'd like to change the sprite size by. All right, now we've set ourselves up for success. Let's ask the user our first question. Let's start with an easy question to get to know the user. The first question I always ask any new friends is simple, their name. I'll create a name variable to store the user's response in. Open sensing, then drag an ask and wait block in. Type what's your name into the white bubble to get to know the user. Then drag a set variable to block underneath and select name from the drop down menu. Use the answer bubble from the sensing category to set the name variable to the user's response. Let's test this out. Click the green flag to run the code, then type in your own name. Notice how the name variable appears on screen too. When I meet a new friend, I need to know just more than their name. I'm really interested in the things we have in common. My favorite food is pizza. I wonder if my new friend likes to eat pizza too. Let's find out. From the sensing category, drag in an ask and wait block to ask the user what their favorite food is. Let's give the user two options to choose from, pizza or tacos. Then create a new variable called food. Use a set food to block to store the user's favorite food in the variable. Let's test this out again to make sure the response is being stored in the correct variable. Okay. We now know our new friend's name and their favorite food. Hmm. What else do we want to know? Let's repeat this process a few more times to ask questions to really get to know each other. I'm going to ask the user what their favorite place is to go, beach or the mountains, and their favorite type of game to play, video games or board games. 
We'll make a new variable for each new question, just like we did for the name and food questions. Let's add our set variable two blocks under each new ask block and select their corresponding variables. Finally, let's add our answer blocks from the sensing tab. Make sure to test out the code once you've finished adding your questions in. When I meet a new friend, I know it's important for me to actually remember everything they tell me about themselves. Let's create a story in order to show our new friend that we're such great listeners. First, I'm going to add a wait block from the control category to show that I'm giving time to process the information before immediately sharing the information back to the user. Let's pause the project for two seconds. Next, open looks and drag a say block into the editor. Let's display the text on screen for three seconds. To show off to our new friend, we'll have to integrate the responses into our story. Open operators and drag a join block into the parameter of the say block. Operators can help us perform math functions in a project, or in this case, combine two strings of text together. Let's introduce the user first. In the join block, I'm going to type this is, then I'm going to drag in another join block into the second bubble. Let's drag a name bubble, then type an exclamation point in the last parameter. Let's test out our project to make sure that all the text appears correctly on screen. Hmm, the text on screen is connected. When using join blocks, it's important to make sure that our spacing and punctuation are accurate so that it appears correctly on screen. Let's add a space after is in the join block to space out the text in the variable. Let's run the code again to make sure it appears correctly this time. Let's repeat this process to share more information about the user. This time, let's share their name and their favorite food. Drag in another say block and set the text to appear for three seconds. Then drag in three join blocks to the parameter of the say block. In the first bubble, I'm going to add a name variable to describe the user. Then I'll type in apostrophe S's favorite food is, and be sure to leave a space after is, and add a food variable bubble. I'll add a period in the final bubble to complete our sentence. Now it's your turn. Let's add two more lines of our story or as many questions that you have to fully introduce our user. I'm going to use say and join blocks to tell about the user's favorite place and their favorite game. Then add another say block to complete my story. What will you include in your story? Remember to include spacing and punctuation in the right places to impress your new friend. Click the green flag to test out the variables and the responses. You know what would be really cool? If we actually showed our new friend all of their favorite things on the screen. Let's create three new sprites to create images for the user's favorite food, place, and game to play. Click the cat icon to select an image from the gallery or upload your own. For each sprite, we want to create two costumes. I'll select the taco image from the sprite gallery, then I'll upload an image for the pizza costume. Remember to center the image in the canvas and remove the background if needed. Make sure to change the names of the sprites, in this case I'll change it to food. After that, I'll repeat this process and upload images for the beach, mountain, video game, and board game choices. I'm going to update each of the names of the costumes. Let's return to the coding area and update each sprite's costume based on the user's responses. I'm going to use a broadcast block from events to send a secret message before we share the story with the user. Create a new message called set choices. Then click on the food sprite. Let's hide the sprite when the green flag is clicked. 
After, drag a when I receive block from events and select set choices. Let's use a conditional statement to help the project determine which image to display on the screen. Drag if underneath when I receive set choices. Then open the operators tab and drag a contains block inside the if condition. Drag a food variable bubble into the left side of the contains block, then type the first food choice, pizza, inside the right side. The contains block is useful for checking different spelling variations. Then, from looks, drag a switch costume to block inside the conditional and select pizza from the dropdown. Last, let's duplicate the conditional and update the contains blocks to check if the food variable contains taco and switch to the taco costume if so. Now that each sprite's costume has been updated, let's display the choice sprites on the screen while sharing the story about our new friend. In Max's sprites code, I'm going to create three new messages to broadcast. Show food, show place, and show game. I'm going to place each broadcast block above the say block that mentions each variable. This way, the sprite will appear on screen right before we tell about it. In the food sprites code, I'm going to use a when I receive show food block to show the sprite. Then I'll place a sprite where I'd like it to appear on the screen and use a go to xy block to set its position. Since each say block is only on screen for 3 seconds, let's only show the sprite image for 3 seconds too. I'm going to add a weight block from control and update the value to 3. Then I'll add a hide underneath block to make the image disappear again. Let's use the backpack one more time to copy over the code to the place and game sprites. Once we've copied over the when I receive script, I'm going to update the broadcast message selected and update the sprite's position as needed. Let's play the entire project all the way through to make sure that everything is working properly. Let's take a moment to celebrate everything we accomplished today. We use event blocks to trigger actions in our projects. We use motion blocks to set a sprite's position. We use looks blocks to show or hide sprites. We use variable blocks to store and update data. And finally, we use sensing blocks to ask questions and store users' responses and variables, making our projects truly interactive. To save the project, click File in the top left corner, then select Save Now. Once your project is saved, let's share it with the Scratch community. If you haven't done so already, be sure to give your project a descriptive title, then click the share button to the right of the title. Once we've saved and shared our project, let's view the project page to add the instructions, notes, and credit sections. In the instructions section, I'll add directions to tell the user how to play this interactive game. In the credits section, I want to thank anyone who helped me create this project and give credit to any sources I used. Check out the link below to view the code for today's project. Remix it and have fun making it yours. Thanks for coding along with me today. See you next time, coding besties.